So I love the star lore. I love the constellation stories. I try to remind people that it wasn't just the Greeks and Romans that had anything to say about the stars. Cultures all over the world looked up and drew patterns in the sky and uh, taught from grandparents on what they thought were important moral lessons. But one of my favorites is Hercules. And, and I like Hercules because he's a strong guy, but also he solves almost all of his problems with his brains. And I think that was a message that Greek men were probably trying to communicate to their sons that it's a fine thing to be physically fit, but to, to be mentally weak, he'll end up in, in, in problems. So one of the greatest stories of Hercules that's well told in the constellations is his first labor, which is to kill this beast called the Nemean lion. And apparently the gods brought the Nemean lion from the moon to terrorize this community of Nymea. And Hercules was called in, being sort of half god, half human, always put in this awkward situation where he had to resolve issues, and he normally sided with the humans. But in the story, the village told him that, you know, this is a tough one, Hercules, because the lion is stab-proof. Its hide is impenetrable. You won't be able to use spears, swords, arrows, or anything else. Well, Hercules, being a rather strong guy, thought, well, maybe for you, you know, that's fine enough, but I'm Hercules. And so he went out after the lion with his arrows and found out they were bouncing off it. It occurred to him that uh, if he wasn't going to be able to stab the creature, he might be able to beat it to death. So he pulled an oak tree out of the ground, according to the legends, and broke off the branches and had this massive club. And he beat the lion into submission to the point that he could then put it in a headlock and he basically suffocates the lion in the headlock. Now in the sky, Hercules, you can actually see him holding this massive club that is also known as the head of Draco the dragon, but you know, you just change the stars when you're telling a different story. So he's kind of got this bicep flex like this, holding the club over here, and his other hand, it's up like this, like he's trying to show off his tricep muscles, but he's carrying the hide of the Nemean lion. You always see Hercules depicted of wearing a lion head and all this great Greek artwork. But I love that story because inside the armpit of Hercules, so when you look up in the sky, underneath the arm that's up like this, holding the hide of the Nemean lion, there's this amazing globular star cluster. The Greeks wouldn't have been able to see it for what it was. In the naked eye and dark sky, you can detect this little bit of fuzzy. But I describe the story as that Hercules didn't realize, um, where again, if he had been smarter and such a big brute, is that he had a cat allergy. And so when he put the lion in a headlock and was suffocating it like that, he was rubbing the lion right here, and he ended up with this kind of rash and the, you know, little pustules, and, and the fourth graders love the grossness of this, uh, building up in his armpit. And then we turned the telescope to show them the Hercules globular star cluster. And the reason why I think that's so effective is that if you just show people a pile of stars and you say 40,000 light years away and it's a million stars, that doesn't stick in their heads for more than five seconds but a good story about outsmarting uh, otherwise unkillable beasts, then that might create this recognition for people. It's certainly a, another way of bringing people into astronomy who might not be fascinated by hard science and mathematics.